Ur ced poetry stachti farik makanya marinu parking wahi marabel reinhead. Um this is Parik Machinyamura, my grandfather's house. He was known by patronymics as Parikin Waki. In other words, his father was Mark. Mark, I suppose, would be the right thing. Anyway, um, he built the house in 1901. They married. Himself and my grandmother married in July uh, 1901. And to make a long story short, he became friendly with a man called Seamus of Delarge or Seamus Delorgi, we used to call him, <coughs> who was the uh, founder, as far as I know, of the Irish Folklore Commission in the 30s. Now, I don't know where they met, but I know that uh, Seamus Delorgi had a lot of respect for my grandfather. He, spe- he sent, amongst others, a professor called um, Arthur E. Hudson from University of California, uh, to meet him here. I don't know how long he stood here, if he stayed here. I have no, no, no more about the men. Then there were others. There was Liam Akustula, uh, Liam Costello from Kaitsimach in County Mayo, and there was Donald O'Caro from Limerick. Both of them were collecting folklore from Porygin, my grandfather. And then um, Seamus Ennis came along as well, I think. Uh, Seamus de Larga advised him to come here and he stayed here for a while. He stayed in lots of places around, that was his job, and he took one recording at least of my grandfather um, telling the story about Halloween and Connemara. Uh, then after that, the, the, the years went by and um, uh, my uncle Kieran was a great help to... Uh, to Seamus Innes, he brought him to a lot of places. Fenish was one of the one of the first places where there was a lot of music and uh, songs and that type of thing. And um, I didn't explain that my name is McKiernan. Now, my father was from Leitrim. He was never in this house. He went to America at the time of the Depression and the two of them met there and lived their lives there. And uh, that's where I was born, but I spent most of my life here and call this my home. Now, um, as I say, as time goes, as time went by and I started getting interested in, in pipes, um, a lot of the my friends are pipers, of course, and they call to see me. A lot of the young pipers call and it's lovely to, to catch up with them, find out how their lives are going and hear their music and all that type of thing. I enjoy that. And, um, well, there were two very good friends of mine, or are two very good friends of mine, who didn't call to the house on this occasion. They called over to the local church over in Carn. We're just about a mile west of Carn, a village called Colleen. And these two gentlemen, pipers, were over in the church when my mother's remains were brought over on the, I think it was the 9th of May, 16 years ago. One of them is the man who's filming me right now, Ronan Brown, and the other one is Jimmy O'Brien Moran. And I'm always saying that I would never forget the support that they gave me on that occasion. Um, now, there are, um, there is another family that I'm very friendly with, and they are the Mulligans. Uh, Neely Mulligan and his son Fiacre, a lovely fiddle player and piper, and the daughter Quiva, fiddle player. And there's also Oshin, who's a great musician, and Eve, the youngest. I don't know if they were here at all ever, and Sandra, the mother. They're very, very good friends of mine. And once I go over to the pipes, I'd like to play um, a horn pipe that Neely composed in honour of his father, Tom Mulligan, who was a lovely, friendly uh, piper gentleman as well, and fiddler. And of course he calls it uh, Tom Mulligan's uh, horn pipe. And I'm going to play also <coughs> one of Seamus Innes's, uh tunes, Port Fat Ward. Well, he called it, well, I suppose Port is a tune, but it's, it's going to be a horn pipe today. <laughs> or at least we'll try to make it one. <laughs> And I want to dedicate these two tunes to um, Stacia A. Lewis in Florida and to Monsieur Lefoy. Two pipers.
about, I suppose it must be six or seven years ago anyway, a friend of mine, a Piper friend of mine in Boston called John McCarthy alerted me to a concert that was supposed to be on in Boston College that night. And I wasn't terribly keen to go to a concert that particular night, but I'm very glad I went because there was a great accordion player, young accordion player from upstate New York called Dan Gurney, who had had a lot of lessons from Monsignor Charlie Cohn and uh, has great admiration for the man. But anyway, I went and I was very taken by his playing and um, we kept up in contact. Eventually he came to Dublin and he's now married to a lady from Dublin called Christine Dolphin. Anyway, uh, about two weeks ago, he sent me this jig online. Didn't know where he got it, but I know where he got it because I reckon he has a skeleton key to the Irish traditional music archive in Merrion Square. And I told him, I told him, I know he snuck in there at night and he kept going through the manuscripts till he got this particular jig. And I told him if he'd pay me a certain sum of money that I wouldn't let all this out in the open, but I didn't get any money. So I'm sorry, Dan, I'm afraid you're in big trouble. There'd be a hefty fine, hefty fines for stealing jigs and reels and hardened and pipes. I don't think there's any fine for stealing polkas or slides. So I'd like to dedicate this to three good friends of mine, uh, John McCarthy, first of all, and the sister Mary and the mother, Mrs. McCarthy. So this is for the three of you. Now. <laughs> Cardney's jig as well but my Cardney's jig didn't come out and I know now why see you're supposed to program the chanter before you play the tune now these pipes were made by the Taylor brothers in Philadelphia all way back in the 1800s hadn't they great foresight now to be able to think into the 21st century and be able to come up with a chanter like that that you can actually program wouldn't they wouldn't they great men now wouldn't they great men I must say that um, this set of pipes that I'm playing are of his great historical interest. Uh, I was, I'm very humbled to be playing them or trying to play them. And I was presented with them on St. Stephen's Day 1989 by Tom and Anna Busby in Massapequa Park in New York, Long Island, New York. And I felt when I saw the, the uh, pipes, well, when I was taking the pipes out the front door, I felt as I was taking a whole chunk of Mrs. Busby's life with me because these were played and owned by her uncle, Mike Carney. And um, who, he recorded with um, Jim Morrison and he recorded singly and a lot of um, cylinders as well. And of course they were built for Patrick J. Toohey back around the, the 1800s, I suppose. So uh, it's a great, huge privilege for me to be trying to play them. I do the best I can. That's all we can do. Patsy came to me very late, Patsy Tui and me, very late one night. And he said, I want to give you an air. And he played, we played the air on this, these pipes. And um, he said, nobody ever heard me playing this air. He said, I'm giving it to you now. Well, very late at night, after one o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to try to play it for you now. And I want to dedicate this to my friend in Singapore, Thang Pi, who's going to be a fine piper himself. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
want to thank my good friend Ronan Brown for coming all this distance to take me today, film me. And I want to thank the people of Elian for giving me this opportunity for playing for all the Sunday. Hope, <laughs> hope I didn't do any harm. <laughs> I hope you don't have sore ears after it. And the best of luck to you. Remember to wash your hands well while this blooming COVID thing is around. And take care of yourselves.